she's like, yeah, so we just want to offer you the role. Do you know how hard it is to control your screaming? I wanted to scream. Like, I was like, I'm out of here. Like, I'm done. What's going on everyone? So this video is going to be a paralegal related video that deals with how I moved from Brooklyn, New York to Dallas, Texas and how I also gave my bosses my resignation letter via email. Let's, let's talk about petty real quick. So I'm going to give you a backstory to this. So I was miserable at one job, right? And I was applying for so many jobs and this the job that I eventually left um, I saw their post and one thing I will say I will credit them for is the huge bump in pay because I went from I'm just gonna be very transparent I went from I believe I believe it was 47,000 to 70,000 like yes 70,000 so I would credit them for that and it was a government contracted job so I was excited and it dealt with criminal law and I assumed okay this is gonna be interesting and overall criminal law is interesting but I think it's not what I like or what I want to do so I was excited but I didn't realize all that went into it and I also believe that a terrible supervisor will make you hate your job and maybe even make you hate the field that you work in. It's a, it's a possibility that I probably would have liked criminal law if I had better supervisors. So and the reason why I'm saying this I'm not gonna like bash I'm not gonna get like a bashing spree but I will say that these advisors were one in particular was just <laughs> that's all I can say right like I can say more but I just I choose not to she was <laughs> anyways so they made working unbearable let me give you an example there was an instance where we had a trial going on and I mean when I interviewed I don't care what anyone thinks or feels I don't mind work I mind overtime I don't care like I don't mind overtime once in a while or like if it's like overtime where I can do it remote I'm a paralegal I don't need to physically be in the office to do some of the tasks that are being asked of. I can do them on the computer so I don't understand like why do I have to be in the office so there's I think this was prior to COVID was this prior to COVID was this prior to COVID you know what no because I remember when I started this job it was three weeks before like the world shut down because of COVID so this was after COVID and we had a trial that we had to prepare for and they told me oh prepare to sleep in the office um like when you go home tonight like bring a toothbrush and change your clothes and I'm like Ex excuse me and like yeah like, we all do and I'm like well I'm not doing that like I will I will leave at two the latest and I'll be back I mean not at the same time I normally start because I'm tired and I'm like well we we need all hands on board I'm like well these hands are gone like these hands are chopped off because you can't ask somebody to work all these extreme hours I never signed up for this when I interviewed for this role I asked you know does this job require you know overtime and they literally said overtime is not really common here so me being the paralegal that I am, I pick up on this wordplay. So with them saying it's not very common, it may happen, right? So I expected that to happen. But to tell someone that they have to they have to sleep at the job, this is not a uh, suit. What? No. You're not paying me like okay, seventy thousand, yeah, that's great. But to sleep in the office requires six six figures. And even then I'd be like, hell no. Like I don't know what, I, no, I think if I got paid six figures, I might be like the people in suits and, you know, whatever, but, no, like, and this is New York City, like, the, 
the office was not even that clean. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So, if this was happening too many times, I didn't like the attitudes. I felt like I was being taken advantage of. I did not feel respected. I felt like they looked down on me, um, that they did not respect what I had to bring to the table. There were instances where I was training other people on how to do things. And it was just, you should never be in a place where you feel like you're less than. I felt like they looked down on me and it had, I don't know if it had to do with the color of my skin. I don't know if it had to do with, I have no idea, I cannot honestly tell you why they felt the way that they felt because I'm somebody that when you're training me, I have my notebook and my pencil. I'm taking very thorough notes. Once you train me on something one or two times, I pick it up and I take like such bulleted detailed um, notes that I can just take the ball and run with it regarding the assignment. So I don't know what like what the problem, like they treated me like I was practically dumb. Like all of that being said, I'm like, you know, I deserve better. So I was applying to so many jobs, but you know, God has a way of really working things out because nothing was working for me and I'm someone that does really good resumes. Like I, my, res my resumes are good. Like, well, my resume, <laughs> I have one. But yes, my resume is really good. So I'm like, why isn't anything working out for me? But it's because God had better. So little did I know that I will be leaving New York and moving to Texas. So I think that's why my plans was delayed because God was like, I'm gonna get you that job, but it won't be in New York. Because if I had got a better job in New York, I would have been hesitant to move to Texas. Because it's like, I already had this job. It's most likely they they would be paying me more money. So I'll be hesitant. But now, you know, things worked out for me. So what happened was, my younger brother and I were just discussing like just starting over. Um, COVID really just shook up the family and. I was like, you know, like we need to just all start over. And so we were looking into where to go. And everyone was like, okay, well, what about Texas? And I was just like, I don't know, because I just feel like I've heard things, not so good things about Texas. So we all started to like do our research. And I'm like, you know what? All the big corps are going to Dallas. Like, let's like look into this more. And my brother and I were on YouTube looking up all these videos. And I was like, you know what? Let's do it. And so I started to apply to jobs from, I think, November or December of 2021. When I tell you guys, I was applying to, I would say, 30, no, you know what? I would say a, a minimum of 10 jobs, maximum of like 20 jobs per day. There were days, there were some days when I didn't apply at all because there's nothing more depressing than applying to all these jobs and nothing is happening. Nothing. Or you get the emails back like a month or two later saying, we're sorry to inform, we will let them more, um, the, like a better candidate. I'm like, ugh. But um, from November, December of 2021, I think January, I probably took a break. I think I took a break because I was getting really depressed. Like I think mid-January. And then I picked it back up again um, the second week of February of 20, 2022. And then what happened was by the, I think a week after that, I got a, a, an email. It was a government job. I was so excited because I've always wanted a government job. And um, I forget what the I forget what the role is now. It's something within the court. And they hit me up. I did I think two or three interviews. Come to find out, they ended up not picking me. I was one of two. They, it was it was me and one other candidate. And they felt as though I was too nice. They needed someone that was more aggressive. And I was like, huh. I think that people hear my voice and they truly think. I am a nice person, but to be in the field of a, you know, as a paralegal, you have to have thick skin, you have to demand respect, um, you have to stand on your ish, okay? So I can be tough when I need to be tough, when work needs to get done. 
<clears throat> so I was pretty bummed because I always wanted a government job and it's crazy because that job would have paid me I think $3,000 less than what I was getting at the government contracted job but I figured it's a foot in and like I'll figure it out cost of living here is less like I'll figure it out and I got depressed I was so like when I tell you I was I was sad for a week but again God's delay is for a reason because now not even I think two weeks later I got an email and let this be a sign to somebody always double check your emails like don't think everything is spam don't like don't assume that everything needs to be spam I got this email I'm at the job I, I got an email and I thought it was a spam kind of email but then at the end I thought I saw that it said human resources and I'm like wait a second and I, was, I went back to the email I'm like wait a second but did that say HR so I looked at it and I, I, read, I read the email again and I'm like I don't remember applying to this job like and I'm searching through my indeed applications like the um, application sent like you know field or whatever I don't see it so I asked her I'm like hey thank you for getting back to me uh, I'm so happy that you're interested in um, interested in me as a potential candidate do you mind just referencing um, the post that I applied to because the email seems very vague. I just want to make sure that it's not spam. Don't be afraid to say these things. If you if you're if the email that they're sending you is not clear and they're legit, they'll they'll have no problem forwarding you know the original post back to you, especially if they're interested in you. You know. So she did, and I'm like, oh, I remember this job. I just remember thinking it's it's like a long shot because it's not really what I've done before. Like it's paralegal work, but not in the field. That I've done before so I was like wait what so we I did the, I did a phone interview with the HR person she loved me then I did a video interview with a lady I forget what her role is uh, was at the time she's she's long with the company but she um I forget what her role was but she was very um she was like the liaison between the legal department and like the CEO or whatever She's not the secretary. I don't, I don't remember what her role was, but she loved me as well. And then she said, I'm going to recommend you definitely to, to the legal department. And that's when I met my supervisors um, and bosses um, for the next video call. And they loved me. I met again with the, uh, the same lady again that I did the video conferencing with. And she was like, okay, you know what? I'm definitely going to get back to you and keep you posted. And so a week, not even a week goes by. I think three or four days later, they they emailed me and said, are you available for um, a quick phone call? And she's like, yeah, so we just want to offer you the role. Do you know how hard it is to control your screaming? I wanted to scream. Like, I was like, I'm out of I'm done. So ironically, ironically, I had put in for vacation time um, to go to Texas and visit it um, in April. I think we were, my family and I were supposed to, go to, supposed to come to Texas April 13th through April 20 something, right? <laughs> I laugh because you're gonna laugh too. So the job knew that. So what happened was, um, when I got the job offer, it was April, I would say, was it April or was it March? You know what? I got the job offer maybe March 20, like the last week of March, like March 29th or 30th. And I asked for three weeks notice from for for them to like allow me to just like pack up. No, I asked for I asked for six weeks because they understood that it wasn't just a matter of me giving them notice, but it's giving the company notice, but also for me to pack up and like move. Because I'm moving from New York to Texas, like that's a humongous move, right? So 
I asked for a five to six weeks notice. And so what happened was, once I got that job offer, because I, what I did too, and what I would recommend that you guys do is, when a job says that they hired you, do not give your job notice until you have a letter in hand from the your, your new employer saying, here you go, like you are now officially an employee of blah, 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 as of blah, 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 your compensation is like, that lets you know that you are, you got the job offer. Yeah. That happened March 30th. I told my job, I think April 6th or 7th. And what happened was one of the supervisors, she just never like logged in that day. No notice, like I, she didn't say anything about, oh, I'm not gonna be um, on online today. So I was like, okay, well, the other one is on. But she's not really being active, like with like communicating with any any of the paralegals. So she logged off at 2 p.m. when I intended, because she's supposed. To, she normally hits all of us up individually just to just check in. She never did. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what else to do. So I'm like, you know what? I asked my mom, I'm like, mom, what do you think I should do? She's like, just send them an email. Like at this point, who cares? So I sent them an email and I texted them to let them know. I sent you my letter of resignation via email. When I tell you they were furious and then they asked, can you talk? I said, no, I am busy at the moment. We can talk on Monday. Cause I think when I sent them the resignation, it was either Thursday or a Friday. So when we spoke um, on Monday, they were pissed because they were like, I thought you were gonna be here long term. I'm like, why would you think that? Did I ever say out of my mouth, I would be here long term? The way that I did it, I gave them two weeks notice and in those two weeks counted my two weeks vacation. So I gave them two weeks notice. I, I only worked maybe two days before I went on my trip and then two days after my trip. I only worked four days of my two weeks and then they still had to pay me for my unused vacation time. And did they pay me for my sick time? No. Yeah, no. So yeah. So that's what I that's what happened. They were not happy, but guess what? I don't care. It's been a year and a half now that I've been in Texas. I love my job and I don't regret a thing. I feel as though yeah, it probably would have been more respectful to give them their resignation letter in person, but this was in the middle of the pandemic and they would choose when they would want to log on when they would when they would want to come in the office they were disrespectful well not they one in particular was disrespectful so honestly i don't regret a thing i think that most would say that you know you would want to keep a good rapport with these with almost all your managers former managers because you don't know how you may need them in the future I will never need them in the future except for employment verification and even then HR handles that so let me know what you guys think and please stay tuned for another paralegal related video if you like this video please do me a favor like comment subscribe and share thanks bye